Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Sophie Erber. Tim Siemens on assignment. Major policy changes coming from one of Siouxland's largest employers, Tyson Foods, announcing all of their U.S. workers must be vaccinated against COVID-19. And it's our top story now at 6. A memo released today to all Tyson team members from President and CEO Donnie King states, quote, we did not take this decision lightly. We have spent months encouraging our team members to get vaccinated. Tyson adds under half of its workers are vaccinated tonight, and the decision is for the health and safety of one former employee at Tyson says the vaccine should still be a personal decision and not a mandate. I think everyone should get vaccinated just to like protect everyone, but... I think it should uh, be up to like the person itself, they want her or not. They shouldn't be forced by their company or employer. Tonight at 10, KCAU 9's Dylan Adams tells us when all workers must be vaccinated by, plus how this may become the norm for processing plants similar to Tyson. It's no longer just employers that are requiring vaccines. New York is now the first big city in the nation to announce vaccine requirements for indoor diners and gym goers. Vaccination cards will be accepted as proof of inoculation along with state and city apps. New York Mayor Bill de Blasio says the new measures that will go into effect in mid-August are set to be enforced. Fire crews back on the scene this afternoon for a grass fire that began last night out on Highway 20. Hot spots reignited that fire caused by a semi that was hauling hay. It burst into flames yesterday afternoon. Traffic was slowed down for a few hours while crews worked today. Yesterday's fire caused a portion of that highway to be shut down for several hours as crews struggled to put those flames out. One person was hospitalized this morning following a single vehicle rollover crash in rural South Dakota. According to the Turner County Sheriff's Department, it happened at 282nd Street and 460th Avenue. That's south of Chancellor and just north of Davis. Officials stated that an SUV was heading west on 282nd Street. That's when the driver lost control and rolled into a nearby creek. That driver was taken to the hospital for serious but not life-threatening injuries. A teenager who was critically injured at Adventureland is being released tonight after a month's stay in the hospital. An attorney for 16-year-old David Jaramillo and his family says that teen was placed on life support following a July 3rd accident on the Raging River Raft Ride. Jaramillo's 11-year-old brother, Michael Jaramillo, died one day after the accident. The attorney says David is talking, texting, even making his own phone calls, and he has been able to run. That teenager still faces rehabilitation to address balance issues and improve his fine motor skills. There was a burst of violence near the Pentagon today. Officials say a Pentagon officer died after being stabbed at a transit station that was outside the building. A suspect was shot by law enforcement officers and died at that scene. The incident occurred on a Metro bus platform that is part of the Pentagon Transit Center and just steps away from the Pentagon itself. The incident is, is over. The scene is secure. And most importantly, there's no continuing threat to our community. The FBI is on scene, leading the investigation. And again, the Pentagon and the Pentagon Reservation are safe and secure. Pentagon was locked down for more than an hour after that incident occurred. Yesterday, it was announced that Simone Biles, the Olympian, would return to compete in today's balance beam final after dealing with what gymnasts call a case of the twisties. Siouxland gymnasts say the twisties is when a gymnast suddenly cannot make the necessary spins mid-air and they lose their sense of where they are while performing that skill. That, of course, can be very dangerous. So these gymnasts tell KCAU to see Simone Biles return from dealing with that issue and to win an Olympic medal is inspiring to them. One local gymnastics coach adds the psychological challenges are not that uncommon. As far as their mental blocks go, it, it really is more common than people think. Um, you know, especially on beam and bars and all of those, they're doing all of these difficult skills and it's very easy to forget what you're working on. KCAU 9's Jason Toktagian tells us how local gymnasts deal with overcoming this dangerous sensation and what it meant to see Biles return to competition. All that tonight at 10. Let's check in now with Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson for a look at our forecast. And Scott, a nice and breezy day. 
That's right, Sophie. Some very uh, pleasant conditions out there on this August day. High temperatures this afternoon were able to rise into the 70s and 80s. 80 degrees, the official high in Sioux City, 81 in Sioux Falls, 79 degrees today in Esterville. Low temperatures tonight should be sinking back into the 50s. It looks like tomorrow will likely be dry, but as we get into tomorrow night and Thursday morning, there is an opportunity at some showers and thunderstorms to happen. We'll preview how much rain will fall and what lies ahead for a hot weekend. It's all in the 9 on 9 forecast coming up shortly. Back to you, Sophie. All right, thanks, Scott. Well, options are expanding tonight for renters in Sioux City. The ribbon was cut at District 42 officially today. That was celebrating the new development there. Among those in attendance was Iowa's Governor Kim Reynolds. She spoke on the state's need to increase workforce housing like this complex, which is attainable housing for people who earn too much to qualify for traditional affordable housing subsidies. District 42 offers studio, one- and two-bedroom apartments, along with townhomes. The focus is on the future now for educators and how they use technology in their classrooms. Teachers from across the Sioux City Community School District gathered at the Career Academy today. There they presented to the public how they use technology to educate their students to be future ready with a variety of programs. The project also allows teachers to grow as educators. It's really pretty neat and, and pretty cool. You get other ideas as an educator. You're growing and realizing that, you know, maybe you thought of something, but the other team didn't think of something or similar ideas, but yet all different. So you, you're able to grow and learn from others as well. Each school has teachers a part of the Future Ready program to help keep curriculum as futuristic and fresh as possible. Briarcliff University has more to offer now with its new programs. That university introduced two new undergrad degrees in a press conference in Healan Hall. They are expanding their health care program to include something called health care, which focuses on addressing people's needs outside of being a doctor or a nurse. And sports information as part of their mass communications class. That's to propel students wanting to work in the world of athletics. Um, over the years that I've been here, which is quite a while, I've seen our department change drastically from darkroom to digital photography. We've needed to adapt to what society is doing. All the way with the increase of the number of Both programs are set to be available at the university this coming fall semester soon. It is National Night Out. That's an annual community building campaign for police and other emergency first responders and their neighbors. We are taking a live look now from Dakota City and their first National Night Out event at the fire hall there. Food, games to enjoy, as well as local departments and organizations for people to visit one-on-one -on -one with. If you'd like a full list of the National Night Out fun going on here in Siouxland in your community, check it out on our website at the address on your screen or the free KCAU 9 mobile news app. For many people, service dogs are an essential part of daily life, but their training can be very expensive. How one family is overcoming that high cost coming up. And we've got some wonderful weather to take the dog out for a walk. It should stay pleasant on Wednesday. Some slight rain chances in our future and a sizzling weekend. The 9 on 9 forecast straight ahead. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Tim Seaman, Sophie Erber, Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson, and Sports Director Jake Jones. This is KCAU 9 News at 6. Lots going on across Siouxland today, including that national night out and really a great night to get outside. You might still be a little bit bothered if you're prone to breathing issues with that smoke in the air, but we're clearing up. Yeah, it looks like that is going to get better here as we continue through this week. Sophie, we've already seen some improvement on the smoke front as we look outside from the Ho-Chunk Center camera established in downtown Sioux City. We've had a nice sunny day with high temperatures right around 80 degrees for this afternoon. Checking in on what's happening down at the airport now. The temperature is measured at 77. The wind is from the south at 7 miles per hour with a relative humidity of 52 percent. And the dew point is in the upper 50s right now, so it's not too muggy outside either. Temperatures were checking in in the 70s, 80s, and 90s across the upper Midwest here. It's hotter in western parts of Nebraska and South Dakota now at 91 degrees in Rapid City, 82 to the south in Concordia, Kansas. It's 79 degrees in Mason City and Davenport. Current temperature of 80 outside in Madison, Wisconsin. Looking in closer towards Sioux City, it's 79 degrees in Lamar's right now. And Spencer, it's hotter after that. A couple days consecutively here with highs in the mid-90s, Sunday and Monday, and a lot of sunshine to go along with it. 
It does look like we'll gradually cool things off over the course of next week. Highs in the mid 80s next Wednesday and Thursday. We've been treated to some awesome sunrises and sunsets as of late. Here's another beauty that comes to us from Sheldon, Iowa. Thank you very much to our viewer for snapping this picture and sending it on in. If you have one of your own that you want to, uh, you know, if you're Siouxland proud of your photography skills, just jump over to the website there, find the weather tab, and send us your photos. All right, thanks so much. It's got another great one. All right. Well, News Nation Prime is the country's only live national newscast in prime time. It comes your way every night at 7 o'clock, of course, on News Nation. Here's a preview of what's coming up there tonight. Tonight, more evidence of the Wuhan lab leak theory. How and why the New York Times may have worked to discredit it. That's coming up on Balance tonight, followed by News Nation Prime. Now here's Adrian with a look at tonight's band field. Thanks, Leland. Tonight on Banfield, one of the most celebrated entertainers of all time. Now the 15-year legal battle over his estate is over. The daughters of James Brown join us live tonight on Banfield. Again, News Nation Prime comes your way every night at 7 o'clock Central Time on that News Nation channel. You can see where it's carried right here on your screen or just check your local listings. Well, service dogs just might be the answer to helping a toddler with special needs. How one family dog helped improve her independence and where that family's turning now next. The family of a little girl with special needs tonight is trying to raise enough money to acquire a specially trained service dog. Jack Shea brings us her story. Everyone who meets her really just lights up. Um, she's, she's just our little ray of sunshine, aren't ya? Three-year-old Evelyn Huber, known to her family in Wadsworth as Evie, was born with a rare genetic disorder that has delayed her development and affected her muscle tone. She was very delayed in being able to roll over, sit up. She did not crawl until she was about 20 months old. She only just started walking independently a little bit this year. And she's delayed in every other aspect as far as speech, fine motor skills are delayed. She's basically has to be watched and dealt with kind of like a baby. Evelyn's parents say she developed a close bond with their family dog, Josie, and their relationship helped improve Evelyn's mobility and ability to communicate. Unfortunately, Josie died in 2020, and the family now believes that a service dog will be a crucial part of Evelyn's development as she gets older. To have one that will be able to help her with day-to-day -day tasks, extend her mobility and her independence, but also to keep her safe. Evelyn's family recently learned about an Ohio-based nonprofit called Four Paws for Ability that raises and trains service dogs. The organization says the cost of teaching a dog to meet Evelyn's specific needs is about $40,000. And the Huber family is being asked to raise $17,000 of that total. And so far, Evelyn's family is halfway to their fundraising goal. Here in Sealand Northeast Community College and Wayne State College signed a memorandum. It builds an Associate of Applied Science and Bachelor of Science Technology program. President of Northeast Community College, Leah Barrett, and President of Wayne State College, Mary Rames, Ramies, tells KCAU 9, graduates of the new program will have several opportunities for careers. If you'd like to learn more about how the program benefits students, you can find this digital exclusive story online right now at SiouxlandProud.com or click that story on our free mobile news app. And we switch gears now. KCAU 9 Sports Director Jake Jones joins me again. Jake, what do you have tonight? Well, I'll tell you what, Chris Nelson from USD yeah. getting the job done in Tokyo. Got a little bit more on the former Coyote after the break. Plus, the X's look like a whole new team pretty much because they are for the next three days. I've got those details coming up next in sports. And today, found out what the women's matchups look like. 14 games are set for the two-day challenge with a rematch of the NCAA tournaments and wild Sweet 16 game between Indiana and NC State headlining. The games will begin on December 1st with Nebraska hosting ACC counterpart Wake Forest while Duke 
travels to Iowa City to take on the Hawkeyes the following day in a battle of four-letter opponents. Both Iowa and Nebraska picked up wins in the challenge in 2019, helping the Big Ten to a 9-5 victory, looking to repeat in 2021. Very clever. I had to think of what you meant for a half a second, those four-letter <laughs> opponents. I got to Iowa and Duke. Got to keep us all sharp somehow. Thank you for doing that <laughs> on this Tuesday. Jake, and we check in for one final forecast with Scott first. Let's take you outside right now in downtown Sioux City. Finally tonight, a French zoo just south of Paris is proudly showing off two new offspring, female twin giant panda cubs. Check it out. Their parents are one a 10 year on a 10 year loan from China. The mother has given birth to a baby before about four years ago. Oh. Look how tiny, right? Oh, are those giants yet? I don't think they've earned their <laughs> yeah, names. Yeah, giant itty panda bitty. does not describe. Yes, itty bitty pandas. Thank you, Scott. These new itty bitty twins will help ensure the survival of their species. There are only roughly 1800 giant pandas living in the wild in China. About 500 of them are in zoos worldwide. Congratulations. And uh, we will have to keep you posted on when those pandas do become giant because uh, they are very small. They don't even look like pandas yet. And our weather, um, it's still looking like summer here in Siouxland. And thank goodness some of that smoke clearing out, Scott. Yes, yeah, so it looks like that. It's going to get better here as we go through this week. 57, the overnight low, cool and comfortable. And tomorrow, expecting to see a high of 85 in the afternoon, mostly sunny. A chance of a few storms on the radar tomorrow night leading into Thursday. And it looks like it'll be hot this weekend. Highs in the mid-90s, Sunday and Monday. All right, thanks so much, Scott. Thank you for joining us. We'll all see you here tonight at 10. Until then, have a great night, everyone.